section 2.1 of the Foundation Free Calculus 10 course. We're hopefully going to figure out something called the tangent ratio today. And we're going to be studying this thing called trigonometry for the next few weeks. Now, if you don't know what trigonometry means, it's really just the, what, study? Ometry is always a study of triangles. Okay. Uh, the study of, in particular, the sides and the angles of the triangle. Now, to help us learn this stuff, we've got a few new terms that I need to teach you. So, we need to name the sides of a right triangle. You might have remembered this from your Math 8 studies, but the longest side, which is the one always across from the 90 degree angle, that's this one over here, is called the hypotenuse. That's right. Hypotenuse. Now, there are two other sides to this story. I better label this too, hypotenuse. There is a side that is what I call across from the target angle. The target angle is the one we actually know right here. So this angle is the target one. So the one across from it would be this side over here, and that's called the opposite. And then there's another one. What is this? Can't get rid of the screen. Oh, here it is. There is another side, the other one, which is the side what I call next to the target angle. Now, of course, there's two sides next to it, but the longest one's hypotenuse. So the one next to it over here is called the adjacent. Adjacent. Opposite. And the target angle actually has a name. It's Greek. It's called theta. So that's the target angle or the angle that you know. All right? Now, here's some practice for you. I want you to do the same thing with this other right triangle on the right-hand side here. This time I changed my target angle. It's now down here. So, first of all, I always like to label the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the, that's right, longest side also the one across from the right angle. Okay? Then I like to do the opposite side because that's hopefully easier. It's across from the target angle. So which one's across? Yeah, over here. And then finally, which one is the adjacent side? <laughs> it's the last one, the leftover one, or the one next to the angle. Cool. So, Here's your choice now, or here's your goal. I want you to quickly practice labeling the hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. Notice I've highlighted or capitalized the first three letters because you don't want to write up the whole word all the time. And then in this case, I'm saying make sure you're using A as the target angle. Okay? So I'll quickly show you the first one. If A is the target angle, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Right? Now, your job is to do the next two. All right? Go. You should be pausing the video. <laughs> Here's my target angle. Here are the answers. Hypotenuse, the longest side, always across from the right angle. Opposite, across from the target angle. Adjacent, next to the target angle. Last one over here. Same thing, hypotenuse, across from the right angle, opposite, across from the target angle, last one, adjacent. Okay? Good. Now, some old, more review before we actually begin. <laughs> I want you to just do a review of Pythagoras. Remember the Pythagoras theorem says we have a relationship connecting all three sides of a right angle triangle, and the relationship is this. The sum of the squares of the two shorter sides equal to the longer side. Or, a lot of you remember the formula a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. As long as you know c is the hypotenuse. Okay? So if we want to figure out something like this, maybe I'll call this side here b. So I have 17 squared plus b squared equals to 32 squared. And if I want to solve for b squared, I'll take 32 squared minus 17 squared. What is that? Hmm. Calculator time. 32 squared minus 17 squared. 
that's 735, okay. That's equal to b squared. I want b though, so I need to take the, that's right, the square root. And I want the answer to the nearest hundredth, so we'll quickly just go ahead and take the square root of 735, and voila, 27.11. Okay, no units here, so we'll just leave it as 27.11. Cool. All right, next one here. Hmm, I'm asking you to find the missing side. In this case, the missing side is the hypotenuse. Let's call that C then, C squared. I just have to calculate this now, again with the calculator. I hope this is good review for you. Wow, 14,125 equals C squared. So C equals to, yes, don't forget, the square root 118.85 okay. if I wanted to write down this one extra step I could okay this one's kind of weird at the end what do these two dashes mean yes they mean that they're actually the same length so if that km is 24 then this distance LM is also 24. That's denoted by those two dashes. So 24 squared plus 24 squared must equal to our hypotenuse. 24 squared plus 24 squared is 1,152. To solve for C, I will once again take the square root. And dun da da What do you get? About 33.94. Good. Hopefully that's a good review. All right, now it's time to actually learn some new stuff. So I want you to look at the next page, and I want you to look at the two triangles below, and I want you to describe some of them somehow. Now to help you describe them, I want you to actually measure the sides and the angle. So I hope you printed this out. And if you have, that's great. I want you to start measuring now. And if you haven't, then I'm just going to use the numbers I have. And then you can just follow along. All right? So when I measured on my piece of paper, AB was 3 centimeters long. Okay? CMs. BC, this one down here was 3.3. It's a little bit longer. And angle C was 42 degrees. So that's this angle here. Okay? So when I ask you to calculate the ratio, I want you to take the ratio of AB, which is 3, divided by BC, which is 3.3. And if you actually do this, you get approximately, I think, 0.9. Okay? Now, do the same thing with the bigger one. DE, I measured it as 5.2. EF was 6. And angle F was this one here, also 42. And then if I did the ratio here, 5.2 over 6, yes, this is about 0.9 as well. So what do you notice about the ratios of these two sides? So this divided by this, and the ratio of this divided by that. Hopefully you notice that the ratios are the same. And notice also the angle, the target angle, or angle C and angle F, is also the same. So what does the value of this ratio depend on? It depends on that target angle that we were trying to measure. So I want to generalize this idea for us. Because if you have a target angle, and if I asked you to compare those two sides, okay, this one and that one. By the way, what are the names of these sides? Aha, uh -huh. the yellow one, opposite, the blue one, that's right, adjacent. So the ratio comparing the length of the opposite side to the length of the adjacent side does not depend on how large or small the triangle is, because both those triangles, the small and large one, had the same ratio. But it only depends on the measure of the target angle. In that case, it's theta. So here's the big thing, the tangent ratio. This is what we're going to call this tangent ratio. is equal to the length 
of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. Okay? Now, I don't want you to write that down every single time. That's a lot of writing. So there's a short form that many teachers use. Tangent theta is just equal to opposite OPP over the adjacent side, ADJ. Okay? That's the key thing that we're going to learn about today. Okay, so let's look at example one here. And I've got a triangle within a triangle. Interesting. I have a smaller triangle. I'll highlight that in yellow. I have a larger triangle. I'll do that one in green. Notice they both share the same target angle here. And your job is to find the tangent ratio for the small one. Well, for the small one, you're looking at the length of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So which number represents the opposite side? Good. Three. All right, here's the opposite side. Which one's the adjacent side? The one next to it. That will be four. So the tangent of this angle, okay, of the one in red here, is equal to this ratio of three over four. Okay. Now do the same thing with the large triangle now. The large triangle, the tangent ratio, so same angle, right? Looking at the larger triangle, the opposite side is six, the adjacent side is eight. And notice that if I were to simplify six over eight, that also equals to three over four. Same. So once again, the key thing is that the ratio of the corresponding sides of a similar triangle are actually equal. So the tangent ratio is also the same for any given theta. So as long as the theta is the same, I don't care how big or small the triangle is, this tangent ratio is always the same. So let's move on to the next page. And here's example number two. I want you to figure out the ratio for tangent of A and also tangent of C. So A is my target angle. So knowing that A is my target angle, what is the opposite side and what is the adjacent side? Yeah, opposite is 10. So I guess this ratio is 10, the opposite, over the adjacent, 17. Now, if I ask you to find tangent of C, though, it's a different story because now we're looking at this as the target angle. So what is my opposite now? Yeah, because I'm looking at the angle or the side across from C, that would be now 17. And then the adjacent side would be 10. So you see how the ratio really depends on the angle that you're talking about? Mm. Now, why is this also helpful to us? Well, one of the things is this. If you have the ratio of the two sides, you can now go about calculating the actual measure of the angle. So if I wanted you to figure out angle A, okay, like actually how big this angle is here, okay, I can now do it with the tangent ratio that you put from above. So if I just copy down tangent A equals to 10 over 17. Now remember, tangent is some function, something that does something to this angle A that gives you the ratio 10 over 17. Now on your calculator, I don't know if you've seen it, but on your calculator, hopefully you'll see a tangent button. But hopefully you'll also see on top of it something called tan minus 1. That would be the reverse or the inverse of tangent. So in order for me to get rid of this, this tangent here, what I want to do is isolate A, kind of like algebra, but I don't divide by tan. Mm -mm. This tan isn't a number, it's a function. So I have to inverse the function where I go tan minus 1, of 10 over 17. And that's what you're going to type into your calculator now to get the answer. Now, also on your calculator, you should make sure you're in something called degree mode. Mm, angles can be measured in many different ways, but degrees are what we use in pre-calculus 10. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And then I'm going to type in inverse tangent and then the ratio of 10 over 17. Now your calculator might be a little bit different. Some calculators require you to do the ratio first, and then finally do the second function tan or the inverse tan. You just have to figure it out, ask your friends, ask your teacher, okay? Bam, there we go, so 30.5 degrees. I'm gonna round to the nearest 10, okay? So can you do the same thing now with angle C? So I'm just copying the ratio again. C then equals to this inverse tangent of 17 over 10. 
go to your calculator and there you have it 59.5 now some of you may be thinking Mr. Lee um, I knew something from way way back in elementary school uh, I remember that the sum of three angles in a triangle add up to 180 so I could have found angle C very easily by taking 180 subtracting the right angle and subtracting angle A which is 30.5 you are correct it would also give you the same answer as 59.5 but I want you to practice using this ratio of tangent and the inverse tangent function so it's great that both ways work this is the beauty of math there's many ways to do things okay all right so now let's take a look at some of these curricular competency questions I'd like you to read it and then see if you draw a picture and let's see if we can answer it together so I got a small boat. It's 100 meters from the base of a lighthouse. It has a height of 36 meters above sea level. So I guess here's the sea level. Here's this lighthouse. There's my light. And from there, hold on. Okay, so there's a boat, and it's 100 meters from the base of the lighthouse. Here's my boat. <laughs> Pretty sad boat, I know. But this distance here is 100. The lighthouse has a height of 36. So it says calculate the angle from the boat to the top of the lighthouse. So you think about where my triangle is, my right angle triangle. Hopefully you can see it like this. And I'm asking you for the angle from the boat to the top of the lighthouse. That's this one down here. Okay. So that can be my theta. So how do you figure this out? Well, hopefully now you can see that I have a triangle. I'm going to use my tangent ratio. Tangent theta this time. Theta is the thing I use to represent my missing angle. And it's the length of the opposite side, which is 36, divided by the length of the adjacent side, which is 100. And just like before, we just have to do the inverse tangent of 36 over 100, plug it into your calculator, and voila, you are done. So second function tangent, 36 over 100. Done. About 20 degrees. Oh, 19, oh, tenth of a degree, oops, 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 tenth of a degree, 19.8 degrees. There you go. Now, this angle that we just figured out, the angle from the boat to the top of the lighthouse, is called the angle of inclination. Incline, going upwards, okay? And this angle is always measured from the horizontal going upwards, all right? So just make a note of that. All right, two more. Ooh, number five now. Hmm. Got a ladder this time, and it leans against the side of the school. Okay, with the base three meters from the wall. Here's the school. Got my ladder. It's 15 feet long. Side of the school with a base of three meters. Hmm, three meters. Okay. Three meters from the wall. To be safe, the angle created by the ladder in the floor should be between 55 and 75. So is this ladder in a safe position? So I guess I need to really figure out this angle here. And in order to do that, I need to what? You're right. I need to figure out the tangent ratio. So if you did this, tangent theta equals to, and you're like, Oh, I don't have the opposite side. You're right, you don't. I guess you do have the adjacent side, that's 3. So I guess you could say something over 3. But we have to figure out this opposite side first. So how do we figure out this missing side here? You got it. We have to use Pythagoras. So maybe down here what I'll do is find the missing opposite side. First, notice one other hiccup with this question. The units are different. Oh no, feet and meters. Brutal, brutal, brutal. How do we change feet into meters? Uh oh. If you did unit one, you'd know, but maybe you haven't. So this is where you go play, pull out Google and say, hey, help me out, help me out. Where is the conversion from meters to feet? Hmm. You can do that yourself right now. One, two, 
one foot is equivalent to about 0 0.305 meters. So I notice that one foot is equal to 0 0.305 meters. So 15 feet would be just 0 0.305 times 15. <laughs> Using that on my calculator. That's about 4.575. 4.575. So, 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 I can now use Pythagoras to figure out the missing side. Let me call that missing side opposite OPP. So, 3 squared plus OPP, the opposite side squared, must equal to 4.575 squared. Okay? So the opposite squared will be equal to 4.575 squared minus 3 squared. Do you see why we need Pythagoras, all this stuff? 4.575 squared minus 3 squared. Oh, that's 11.93. So the opposite squared, 11.93. Now don't forget, you need to also take the square root. That's what a lot of people forget. And so the square root becomes... 3.45 meters. Okay. Whew. Why did we need to do this again? Oh, right. Because we needed to figure out the opposite side in order to do the tangent ratio. So now the opposite side is 3.45. Nice. So if now I were to take the inverse tangent of this, I can figure out the actual corresponding angle. And when I do this, let's see, second tangent, or inverse tangent, 3.45 divided by 3, and I get the answer of 48.99, so approximately 49 degrees. Whew! So, is this ladder in a safe position? Well, it's supposed to be safe only between 55 and 75, so it's too low, it's going to fall down. So the answer is no. The angle of 49 degrees is not between 55 and 75, so it's not safe. <laughs> okay. So here we've used this idea of tangent ratios to help us actually solve a good real life problem. Don't want to hurt myself. So therefore, doing this math is saying, wait, 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 ladder in this case, in this position, not safe. Okay, last example. <laughs> what is the tangent ratio of a right isosceles triangle? A right isosceles triangle. A right isosceles triangle. A right triangle, that's isosceles. Isosceles means these two sides are the same. So this was 5, this is 5. A bigger one. If this was 12. This is 12. So, what is the tangent ratio? All right, I saw this triangle. I guess I'm saying, figuring out this angle theta here. This one theta here. Actually, since it's a right angle triangle, you should be able to figure it out. Um, I don't know if I actually want to do this one with you now, okay? Because <laughs> I think you can do this. You try it yourself, and then bring it to your teacher to double check your answer. All right. I've already given you some clues with these diagrams. I think you can do this on your own. I believe in you. And then after you're done, tackle this assignment.